in this video we'll be deleting soldered Xeon CPUs for use in a Mac Pro 4.1. The deleted CPUs seen in this video are actually the ones that this video was edited and rendered on. I consider the deleting method used in this video the safest one compared to the others seen on YouTube. In the morning. Now when I got my Mac Pro it came with two 4 core processors making a total of 8. And I knew right away that I wanted to upgrade it to two 6 core processors. The only problem with the 2009 4.1 model that I have is that it uses deleted CPUs. The newer 5.1 models do not have this problem. To make it even worse, you can't buy deleted CPUs anywhere. But deleting is something that is done in the overclocking world a lot. There are even tools for it. Unfortunately, those tools will not work on the Westmere Xeon processors because they are soldered. After much googling and searching on YouTube, I decided to order two CPUs on a Chinese website anyway and try it for myself. The CPUs came in, so let's unbox them and give it a go. Before doing the actual deleting, you need to cut through some silicon lining between the CPU and the integrated heat spreader. The easiest tool to use for this is a single edge blade, or sometimes also called a glue scraper. At first I had a hard time looking for them because I knew what they looked like, but I thought they were used for shaving, and they're not. They're actually used by painters. So do a quick google search for single edge blade, and don't use razor as a search word. I found mine on the same Chinese website. Use the blade to carefully cut through the silicon. Have a look a bit further on in this video, maybe even pause it there to have a look where the silicon is actually located. As I said, be very careful. Do not attempt to do this all at once. Cut in multiple passes and try not to hit the capacitors that are under the integrated heat spreader. Again, have a look at the footage further on in this video, pause it there to see where those capacitors are located. Once you feel that you've cut through all the silicon and you can feel it a bit, we will insert four of the single edge blades, one at each corner. This will provide a little bit of leverage between the CPU and the integrated heat spreader. Find something round to keep the CPU up in the air a little bit. I would suggest a roll of painter's tape like I used. And now we are ready to start applying heat to the integrated heat spreader. I'm using an electrical paint stripper. It makes the job quite easy and it doesn't take very long. Just keep it a bit in motion, not all in one place. And after a while you can hear it pop like a can of Pringles. I kept the heat on just a little bit longer and I could use the knife to separate the integrated heat spreader and the CPU. And be careful because this stuff is still very very hot. I almost burned my fingers doing this the first time. So just separate the parts a bit, let them cool off before we go on cleaning up the CPU. Removing the silicon is quite easy and it doesn't have to really be a neat job. Just be careful not to cut into the CPU and stay away from those capacitors.
there are different methods for removing the leftover solder from the CPU. I just used a knife, um, I've used the single edge blades, and um, I've used a little bit of sandpaper, I think it was 600 grit. And the sandpaper made it a bit easier to get a feeling where I could or had to remove some solder that was left on the CPU. To be totally honest, I don't think you need to or are able to remove all the solder. Just make it a, a nice smooth surface. The thermal paste that we will use between the CPU and the heatsink later on will smooth it out nicely, I think. And it's time to do the actual installation. Now I'm not going to show you how to actually remove the CPU tray from the Mac Pro and reinsert it. Because frankly if you can't figure that one out, you shouldn't be even messing with your CPUs on your own anyway. For the rest of it, it's just an easy swap. Take off the heatsinks, but do remember to label the heatsinks because they are not interchangeable. The old CPU will stick to the underside of the heatsink. Install the new CPUs and do not forget to reuse the old spacer from the old CPU. Both the CPU and spacer have notches for orientation. Do a little bit of cleanup, apply thermal paste and reinstall the heatsinks. Reinsert the CPU tray into your Mac Pro, press the power button and keep your fingers crossed and hope for your Mac to boot up. I actually did it in two stages. I first booted up with one CPU inserted into the CPU A socket, make sure it worked and then I powered down took the CPU out and installed the second CPU into the A socket. At that point I knew that both CPUs were working ok and I went ahead and made it a dual processor machine again. I also had to do a little bit of memory debugging and it turned out that I had a faulty memory stick. In the future I will be upgrading this machine with more and faster memory so it's not really a problem I'm just running it now with 12 gigs of RAM instead of 16 but I am running it free way interleaved. So, let's wrap this video up with sharing some benchmarks. Geekbench 4 on the left made a very nice improvement going over 23k. And let's have a look at Bruce X again. And we are down to 30 seconds from 38. That's not bad at all. So I'm hoping that you enjoyed this video. I think using an electrical heat gun to delete solid CPUs is much safer than the other methods that I've seen. I've seen people using open flames, which are really hard to control, I think. And I've even seen a method using a vice and brute force, which will probably have a higher chance of damaging your CPU. So if you did like this video, like, comment or subscribe down below and as always stay curious.